Sanction has two nearly opposite meanings. To sanction can be to approve of something, but it can also mean to punish or speak harshly to. Likewise, a sanction can be a punishment or approval. This word is confusing yet fitting for the title of a three-part book series written by a well-known artist and author, Roman McClay. He's been featured on podcasts, YouTube channels, and more recently, news headlines across the country. You might know Roman better by the name Lyndon McLeod, the man who became a spree shooter on December 27, 2021. He targeted and killed five people during what news outlets dubbed a rampage across the Denver metro area. When you hear about a murder on the news or hear in the YouTube true crime community, how often do you wonder what, if anything, the deceased did that pushed another over the edge? Legally, there are few scenarios in which a killing would be justified, but morally speaking, what would justify it in your mind under your personal belief system? This is why feminism is wrong, not because there are exceptions. Of course there are. Not because the patriarchy doesn't have uh, collateral damage. Yeah. Of course it does. That's not the point. The point is the bell curve. What, what is the majority of your society going to look like if you eliminate a social system, a sexual dynamic that has been around for 150,000 years? What's going to happen when you just upend that? The shooting spree started in Denver's South Broadway neighborhood and ended at Lakewood's Belmar Shopping District with several incidents in between. Denver Police Chief Paul Pazin, Lakewood Police Department spokesman John Romero and other officials have laid out the following summary of events, which they said began about 5 p.m. The suspect shot and killed two women and wounded a man at a tattoo parlor near the intersection of East First Avenue and Broadway. Shrink the bell curve. You shrink the 80%. So they're not even leading normal lives. So maybe they're not leading extreme lives. They're not transgendered. But they, like the woman is working instead of home. Yes. And maybe the woman's on birth control, so she's having 10, 15, 25 sexual partners in a lifetime, instead of zero to one, yeah. which was normal for most of history. Most of history, brides were virgins on their wedding night. Yes. That was, that was de rigueur. You and speak about that in the book quite a bit. Yeah. That's, a, that's a point it comes up. Oh, it's, it's huge. Because you look at the data. Yeah. Marriage dissolution yeah. increases exponentially after the first partner. Yeah. So a virgin bride has a 91% chance of marriage success. A bride who's had one previous partner to her husband drops to 55%. Severely. Before 5.30 p.m., the suspect fired shots near the intersection of West 6th Avenue and Bannock Street, near the Denver Health Hospital campus, after forcing entry into a home. A van was set on fire in the alley. No one was injured. Of a fucking coin toss. It goes from 91 to 55. Yeah. And then it's dose dependent. So for every five partners, it drops another 10%. So by the time you've had 20 partners, as we're going it's impossible now for you. It's impossible. And this is what people don't understand, is that there are so many dynamics involved in sex that the permissive liberal birth control culture has ruined sexual relationships. It's fucking ruined it. And, and everyone's walking around going, why is the divorce rate so fucked up? Why is it, oh, well, it's because of this, that, and, it, and, and it's like, my position is, and I could be wrong, I'm always wrong, but my position is, well, look at the foundational elements. Look at the data. What is your number one guarantor of a 90 plus percent success rate in marriage. What's your number one rate? Well, for a woman, it's virginity. Yeah. Okay? For a man, it's not. That's a man right. can have a hundred partners and his marriage rate, it doesn't matter. 
But for a woman, that is the number one fucking reason. Now, I'm sorry, but that matters. Yeah. Especially when you map it on to male, self-reported value judgments on women. About 15 minutes later, the suspect shot and killed a man in his residence near East 12th Avenue and William Street in Denver's Cheeseman Park neighborhood. Minutes later, Denver police spotted what they believed to be the suspect's vehicle near West 8th Avenue and Zuni Street and tried to pull him over. The suspect exchanged gunfire with officers and a Denver police vehicle was disabled when hit by gunfire. Police believe the suspect then got on Interstate 25 and drove to Lakewood, where they received reports of a shooting inside a business in the 1500 block of Kipling Street, near the intersection with West Colfax Avenue, just before 6 p.m. The victim died. Lakewood police spotted the suspect's vehicle near the Belmar shopping district and tried to make a stop. The suspect fired at officers who shot back. The suspect eluded police and then fled on foot, entering two businesses, first at Ted's Montana Grill, where he displayed his gun but didn't fire it, and then the Hyatt House Hotel near the corner of South Vance Street and West Alaska Drive. He shot a clerk who died on Tuesday. Shortly after that, the suspect encountered a Lakewood officer and shot the officer, who then shot the gunman. The injured Lakewood officer was still hospital. They asked men, what's the number one trait that you look for in a woman? You know what they say? What's that? Chastity. Chastity. It's the number one trait. Yeah. They want that the most. Now there's outliers. There's some guys that like sluts. Yeah. Most guys don't. Yeah. Most guys would kill for a virgin bride. Yeah. I personally would. Yeah. It's the number one trait. Okay, so you map that onto the data, and you see, and then you look at the evolutionary rationale for it. Well, why would a man want a virgin? Here's why. A man cannot prove paternity. A woman can't. Yeah. She knows that baby's hers, no matter who impregnated her. Just popped out of you like fucking aliens. That's hers, guaranteed. A man has no idea who that child is. Witnesses at the Rock Wood-fired pizza restaurant in Belmar said they heard about eight gunshots, and two of the restaurant's large front-facing windows blew out in a crash of glass. Several of the 30 or so customers in the restaurant flipped over their tables in a barrier-style move, afraid that whoever was shooting outside might venture in. Unless he knows his, vir his bride is a virgin, unless he's watched her, and, and every second of every day since she was sexually mature, yeah. he cannot guarantee that child's his. That's why men are obsessed with virginity, sure. because it's a paternity issue. And I don't know if you've seen the data, but this new 23andMe, Ancestry.com, all this shit, you know what it's done? An ancillary consequence? Paternity tests. Huh. What they find is a man and wife will bring their child in They'll do a DNA test for Parkinson's or whatever the fuck. And they'll find out the father is not the father. 25% of the time. Yeah, this is... Well, I, I... The man who authorities believe killed five people in a shooting spree across the Denver Metro wrote about killing two of the victims in a series of novels he self-published in the four years leading up to the attacks. Lyndon McLeod... 47, wrote about similar murders, personal grudges and a desire for revenge in the three rambling, misogynistic and racist novels, which focused on rage, violence, economic inequality. In the second novel, McLeod describes an attack on a tattoo parlor in the 200 block of West 6th Avenue. The character named Lyndon McLeod bursts into the tattoo shop and kills several people, including the owner of the shop. In reality, police said McLeod went to that block on, fired shots and set a van on fire, but did not kill anyone. McLeod co-owned a tattoo parlor in that block in 2013 called All Heart Industries, said James Clark, who worked at the shop.
At least two people McLeod targeted during his rampage worked with him at the business, which failed because McLeod was controlling, fought with all the employees and acted like a bully, Clark said. Everyone quit because nobody could work in that environment, Clark said. Lyndon blamed everyone else who was involved in it, except for himself. Denver police are aware of the books and they are part of the ongoing investigation, spokesman Doug Shepman said. Shepman declined to answer whether police were aware of the books before the killings. Denver Police Chief Paul Pazin would not confirm McLeod's pen name, Roman McClay, but the Denver Post confirmed the pen name through an acquaintance of McLeod's. Denver Police said McLeod was under investigation by law enforcement in 2020 and 2021, but those investigations did not result in charges. <laughs> yes, they are. You need to make sure they join us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you I mean, see them coming down the other end of the gun. And that's the thing is like, and this, again, this men who have been around men who are violent and predatory but have heart, mm. that have loyalty, that love their brothers as much as they hate their enemies. Mm. This is the fucking thing that 99% of people miss. They put people into two categories. Polite, decent, civilized motherfuckers and violent people. Yep. And I don't think that's nuanced enough. McLeod named both Alicia Cardenas and Michael Swinyard as murder victims in his novels. Cardenas, 44, and Swinyard, 67, were both killed in Monday's shooting spree. Police believe McLeod killed Swinyard inside his home at One Cheeseman Place, an apartment building in the 1200 block of William Street. A property manager for the building told residents in an email that McLeod wore tactical gear, a police logo and a badge when he entered the building. In McLeod's first novel, Lyndon McLeod, wears police gear and kills a character named Michael Swinyard, at his apartment on Williams Street. The character in the book also kills other people in the building and robs them. The character has a list of people he wants to kill and considers some to be more important than others. The murders were like food in the belly, like wine at rest on the tongue. The first book reads, Killing people nourish the soul. McLeod was never licensed as a tattoo artist or tattoo shop owner in Denver said Eric Escudero, spokesman for Denver Excise and Licenses. So if he was doing any tattoo work in Denver, he was doing it illegally since he was unlicensed, Escudero said. McLeod's name was included on the lease for all heart industry, which obtained a Denver body art establishment license in 2013, and was the registered agent for the company, Escudero said. All heart industry which also used the name Flat Black Incorporation, allowed its body art establishment license to expire in 2014. Another person applied for a body art establishment license in 2015 at the same address, and McLeod's name was on the lease for that application as well. The application was later withdrawn. One of the victims of Monday's attack, Danny Schofield, worked at All Heart Industries several years ago, his sister said Wednesday. The address for All Heart Industry, 246 6th Avenue, was taken over in 2016 by Soul Tribe Tattoo and Piercing, the shop owned by Alicia Cardenas. The body art establishment license that Soul Tribe acquired for the location expired in 2017. The tattoo shop is also named in McLeod's novels, and McLeod was seen near a Wells Fargo bank during Monday's spree police said. That bank is the target of a robbery in the novels. McLeod calls the bank the largest corporate criminal. In a blog post about his writings, McLeod said he purposely mixed fictional and real characters to blur the line between what is and what is possible. His books include disclaimers that say events depicted are fictional. McLeod's writings indicate he spent years thinking deeply about the crimes he went on to commit said Max Wachtel, a forensic psychologist based in Aurora. What it sounds like is he had had these fantasies for a long time and was acting them out maybe through his writing.
Wachtel said. Sometimes, writing out fantasies can be an appropriate way to relieve the pressure of a fantasy without actually acting on it, he said. It could have been his way to get these sick fantasies out of his mind, and then he acted on them anyway, or it might have been a thinly veiled plan, Wachtel said. The most common motive for mass shootings is revenge, Wachtel said, and violent writings like McLeod's should raise red flags when they name real people and places. I think the common man is phony here and expects authenticity, authenticity, authenticity here. Yeah. And this is where you, people like you and I live in between. We're more authentic than the common man. We don't reach the ideal. And so what they can do is they can say, oh, they don't reach the ideal. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's like, yeah, but you're fucking three levels below us. Yeah. So fuck you. Yeah. And I think that's get on my level first and then, then criticism. Exactly. Then bitch yeah. about us not being on the peak yet. Yeah. It's like, I, that's how I see someone like Cortez yeah. uh, or even myself. It's like, yeah, we're not there yet. We're still phony as fuck, mm. but we're, we're not as funny as you are, motherfucker. Yeah. McLeod railed against homosexuals in posts, referred to people derisively as Yankees, and appeared obsessed with Nordic genetics. He mocked an FBI investigation into him that authorities acknowledged did not end up in an arrest tweeting a link to his book series at the agency. Yeah, we're operating on a higher level, and there are higher levels above that, uh, but we're all trying to get to those higher levels, Yes, and that's part of the struggle. And especially if you're on social media, that's part of the gig. you got to have a presence in social media, but with that much exposure, it's inevitable you'll say something that's just dumber than fuck. At some point, you, everyone will say something that they'll be like, oh, fuck. I've told you that when I read my book, I wish I had not said that. I wish I could yeah. pull it out. Yeah. I don't want that in the book anymore. Mm. I've mm. thought that. Mm. And I'm glad that I don't do it because it needs yeah. to be in there. And yeah. you said that. Yeah. That ugliness needs to be in there. That, that goes back. He responded affirmatively to a retweet that referred to Antifa soy boys derisively. McLeod, who once lived in Texas before moving to Colorado, appeared obsessed with genetics on social media as well, writing, More journalism. Americans don't understand their own history. Northern Yankee fucks are genetically different from Southern rednecks. We are nothing alike. Yeah. Or maybe I don't even agree with what the fuck I said. I made a claim. So I don't think that's actually accurate. That's it. Yeah. I read that and go, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I don't want yeah. people thinking I think that. Yeah. I don't think that. Yeah. But I, I left it in. And I'm glad I'm going to leave it in, but mm. I can't read it. Mm. I cannot read that book. Mm. I can read number two. Yeah. I can't read number one. Lyndon approached Officer Ferris while she set up a perimeter in the Belmer shopping area. He wore a black vest with police written across it and Ferris at first thought he was security from a nearby business. Surveillance video of the shooting shows Ferris standing outside her police car, which is blocking the intersection at Vance Street and Alaska Drive when Lyndon approaches. The two stand face to face in the intersection for about ten seconds. Ferris appears to reach for something in Lyndon's hands and then draws her gun and starts to back away. Lyndon pauses for four seconds and then turns and fires, striking Ferris. She falls and fires multiple shots. Lyndon turns to run, stumbles and collapses behind her patrol car. Ferris rides in the street for forty seconds before another officer drags her to safety, leaving a trail of her blood in the street, the video shows. Three officers later arrive with guns drawn and surround the gunman, using Ferris's patrol car for cover. Lyndon is lying on his side but rolls onto his back and stops moving. Officers then approach his body. Lyndon shot Ferris in the abdomen and the bullet fractured before exiting her back damaging her sciatic nerve and leaving her temporarily paralyzed in her right leg. Ferris returned to work in May after two surgeries and hundreds of hours of physical therapy. who is violent but is actually honorable and decent and would never hurt his people 
would die before you would hurt his people. Yeah. And is actually better than that nice civilized motherfucker. Yeah. Like and and that is that that is that archetype that I'm interested in. Yeah. Because I, I'm offended by the fact that someone who's violent, who has hurt someone, is just sh- shuttled off into this category of psychopath. Yeah. And and, and that is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Because some of the most decent men, mm-hmm. the most emotional yeah. and decent men that I've ever known are violent. Yeah. yeah. But they are violent against specific threats. 